better say amen. amen. Some people are not saying amen because I, they know they will not come. Praise God. Understanding the covenant of prosperity, part two. Do, have you noticed nobody wants to be poor? Even a native doctor wants to be rich. Nobody wants to be poor. Have you noticed that? I wish you long life. And what? You have never had, even people that are now going to church, I wish you long life and poverty. Have you ever heard that? I wish you long life and what? Prosperity. Everybody wants to prosper. But there is a difference between survival and prosperity. Some people are merely surviving. They are not prospering. What we call survival is hand to mouth. You make it, you chop it. You make it, you chop it. You are merely existing. You are not prospering. You begin to prosper when you don't only have for yourself or for your family, when you now have to reach out to someone, you have started prospering. Everybody wants to prosper. But scripture said, the labor of the foolish man weariet every one of them, for he knoweth not how. As far as prosperity is concerned, there is a how to. How does it work? Likewise, not everybody in business that is making it the way they ought to. So understanding how the covenant of prosperity works is one major assignment you must give to yourself because the moment you understand it, you undergo. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power. He gives you. You don't give it to yourself. You may have skill but you don't have power to prosper. You may have skill, you may have connection, but you don't have power to prosper. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 8, 18, for it is he that giveth thee power to get. Power to get. Many can give, but they have not gotten power to get. That's why you hear people complain, I've been giving, 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 giving since, why have I not been getting <laughs> there is a power to get. And until you understand that dimension, it will look as if your offering is wasted. No! Your offering is not wasted. It is he that giveth the power to get wealth. The power for prosperity is tied to the covenant. Amos 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? You can be walking with someone, your heart is not with the person. True or false? You can be walking with someone, your heart is not with the person. If you are in agreement with the person, the person's goal is your goal. Your goal is the person's goal. You defend the business anywhere you stay. You stand for what the person stands for. Why? You are in agreement. You can't do anything that will make the business fail. Why? You are in agreement. 
You can't be holding any discussion with someone that is seeking how the business will fail. Why? You are in agreement. Can two work together except they be agreed? Even naturally, the reason why some people cannot succeed in business very simple. Whether they are working for somebody or they are in partnership in the business, once your heart begins to go wrong about the business, you are not thinking how the business will fail or how you will do something with somebody to corner something or make sure the thing get k -lek. Nothing will work in your own hand. Because whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. That's why we have very few successful mechanics. True or false? We have very few. Say with me, few. Very few successful mechanics. Do you know why? When they were doing apprenticeship, all they were doing is cutting down their master. So when they go to start their own, the thing is not working. In my lifetime, I've only seen two successful mechanics. Two. One, his name is Ima. Then the other one is Taye. Taye is a Muslim. But he tells me the truth to the teeth. If he tell you that this part will not work, it's as true as he has said it. If he tell you this is the price, go and confirm and call me back if you are ready for us to do it. But someday we collect the price of 15,000 and go and buy the one of 1,005. They will call you Mugu, but they forget that they are the proper Mugu. Am I saying the truth? I'm mentioning these things now because the covenant is stronger than whatever is around you. When you are in the covenant, it is impossible for you to fail. No matter who is wishing you to fail. If you must prosper under God's terms, there are conditions. Say with me, there are conditions. Can you not see the reason why people that are eager to prosper by all means when they go to the occultic realm or the occultic world, they, tell, they ask them, are you ready? Are you sure? And the person, because of desperation, say, anything you say, I'm ready to do it. The next thing, go and bring your mama. <laughs> say what? My what? If you don't bring it, you are dead. You say, hey, I bet ask for another thing. The next thing, go and bring your wife. Shout the blood of Jesus. They say, don't call that name here. Is it happening or not? He say, if you don't bring it within three days, you will run mad. What they are telling you is the terms. Shall be you are eager to prosper. You want quick money. They are not giving you the terms on which it will be released to you. But should I tell you something? Jesus has shed his blood for you. No other blood needs to be shed for you to prosper. Scripture says he was made poor so that through his poverty we might become what? Rich. The blood was his ransom for our escape. But hear me, under God's terms, 
you don't need any blood. Tell your neighbor you don't need any blood. God has terms. And one major, say with me, one major, is for your heart to be towards his house. Scripture says where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. Even in church, we have people that wants to be rich quick. God is eager to give it to you, but you must line up with the terms. My son, give me your heart, not your cash. God looks at where our heart is to determine where he places us on the earth. Jesus said where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. So if your heart is not towards the advancement of this kingdom, you are far from getting this thing. You will be pursuing it. You may never catch up with it. No wonder Papa said, you don't get good by pursuing good. You get good by pursuing God. Only those that pursue God that good pursue. No wonder scripture said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee. It's not following everybody. It's only following those whose heart are after the advancement of his house. Haggai chapter 1, please. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now therefore, said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You, you have sown much and brought in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but are not filled with drink. Ye clothes you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. Thou said, the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, said the Lord of hosts. Continue. Yet look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. <laughs> Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste. And ye run every man to his own house. Verse 10 now. Therefore, the heavens over you is stayed from dew, and the earth stay from her fruits and i call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labors of thy hand then zerubbabel the son of shiltia and joshua the son of Josadek, the high priest with all the remnants of the people obeyed the voice of the lord their god and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him and the people did fear before the Lord look at verse 13 now then speak Haggai the son then speak Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people saying I am with thee say it the Lord my house say with me my house if this is your house you will not think of how this house will scatter. If this is your house, you will think of what next you will do that will bring growth, that will add value. I pity anyone that is in church for gossip. You have registered for tearing. I pity anyone that is in church that is here to sow seed of this God. You may never succeed in holding anything good. If this is his house. If this is his house, and you are not praying towards the advancement of his house, your house can't advance. So what is in your heart even when you are in church?
What is in your heart right now that you are in church? Permit me to say this. Not everybody that is in church came to church. Some are on assignment. But God punish you on that assignment. Your assignment cannot be fulfilled here. I am the headmaster here. <laughs> I am sent for people like you. Because I will pursue you physical, I will pursue you spiritual. Some of them will even run mad. You may not understand what I'm saying. That was how that one came all the way from Ghana on assignment. The first day she landed on a Wednesday service. It was a communion service like this. That was the day her assignment ended. That same day, it's not Kalu Kalu, it's not an Arrangi. She vomited this red delta bead, vomited it from her mouth. That same day, she was sacked from the marine world. That same day, all the marine clothes she was using disappeared. The boy that was supposed to be the husband to be, he was sweating like he goat. So even if you are here for an assignment, watch out. You will see Pepe. I'm not asking you to say amen. All I just need to do is to be prophesying over your head. Whether you say amen or you say amen, as soon as I've released it, it must stamp. Because this is my domain. Scripture said the wicked shall perish in the presence of God. I know what I'm talking about. After she was delivered, she wanted to enter choir. I said, no choir for you. Go to prayer band. <laughs> because if she enter choir, she may reinforce and regroup and look for who to recruit. Praise God. <laughs> but that's not where we are going. Please, I beg you, define where your heart is. If your heart is after God, it will not take you time. Your color will change. Everything about you will change. You have been pursuing money, but money has never answered to you. Start pursuing God, you will see money run after you. Where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. When your heart is here, God's hand will be in your business, in your family, in your career. That is the striking chord of the covenant. You have defined it. My heart towards your house, you too towards my own house. That is God's deal. Say with me, God's deal. The next term of the covenant, like we had on Sunday, is Titan. Titan is key to a world of supernatural prosperity. If you are not a tighter, things are bound to go more tighter for you. Things will become tight. Say with me, tight. Situations will tie you rope. Challenges will make you squeeze. I hope you know there are challenges that can make a man cry. Titan is our spiritual defense against forces that want us to go down. Titan. Please, Sunday, make sure you bring out all my tight booklets. I want to read them one by one. Where I started paying tithe from 25 naira. Tithing is our spiritual defense. Hear me? There are forces still crying out for you to be poor. Your forefathers served idols. Don't pretend we are from Africa. You are doing as if you came from America. You are from Africa. 
<laughs> you are proper Africana. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Our forefathers didn't serve God. They have shrine. Different, different things they were serving. So what ensures us now for the heavens to open is our tithing. You must tight. If not, things will remain tight. You must tight. If not, the heavens will not open. You hear me? The condition of your heavens also determine the condition of your earth. If the heavens does not open, the earth will not open. So tighten, establish the pathway for your flow. Thirdly is our worship offering. We have had it before. Kenne Copeland said, if you bless God, he will bless you. If you blame him, he will also blame you. To show that God is increasing you, is anything increasing in your life? Since this church started, some people have been paying 20 naira offering. They have never graduated. But they have been changing phone, buying new shoes. Their offering is still 20 naira. You are killing yourself. When your children grow to meet you, what will you give them? You look for coins. <laughs> I'm saying it. It's the truth. You better change. You are smart in giving, but you are not smart in receiving. When it comes to giving, your senses become calculator. You begin to calculate for God. He goes, Shabi, he get mama. Do you understand where I'm going? He goes, he get mama. So that sense you get, who give you? <laughs> he that soweth sparingly shall reap what? He that soweth bountifully shall do what? You hear me? Every giving you give is the one that moves you forward. It's not moving God forward. God does not need dollar. He does not need pounds. He does not need euro. He does not need yen. He doesn't need it. He said, a cattle upon a thousand hills, they are mine. He said, if I were to be hungry, I will not ask you for food. The gold is mine. The silver is mine. The part of the joss is like a shining light. That shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Is your own like that? If your own is like that, your offering should be changing. Your offering should be changing. I still giving twenty naira that you still for the past five years. Twenty naira is your offering. Angels are crying for you. They are crying. When will you change? When will you change? I believe God that very soon I will enter the class of my masters. Amen. You better say amen. amen. <laughs> One day he shared with me his testimony. He said, sit down, let me give you these secrets once and for all. I sat down. He said, your giving controls the heavens. He came back from London waiting to be posted. Papa asked him, where would you like to go? He said, wherever the spirit lead you, that's where I'm going. So he too went and began to pray. To this um, wife that I've gone to be with the Lord, let's pray. They were praying. So Papa just came down there and said, you are going to Ibadan. He said, praise God. I will not to talk too much about Ibadan. The only thing I know is that our pastors don't like going to Ibadan. Because anytime they go there, it's tomatoes and pepper they give them as offering. But the story has changed. He said it was in Ibado, his offering per service entered one million per service. And I'm not saying one million for the three services. One service, one million. Second service, one million. Third service, one million. <laughs> offering, offering. Not tight. It's offering. Is that received? 
receive the works, not the testimony. <laughs> you know, testimonies are sweet. But the process is not what people don't like. People don't like the process, but they like the product. So he said, I'm waiting to see when you will get to that room. I said, I'm coming. I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. I will not talk too much about his, uh, his impact on, in that direction, even the most recent one. I'm not going to talk. Because some people may not be able to sleep well today. But he entered it by a covenant. He said, till date, I have not dropped. He said, till date, I have not dropped. There's a level you enter to. You enter. You enter the flood realm. Say with me, flood realm. Flood realm. Hear me? Giving is living. The condition of your living is determined by your giving. If you are stingy with your giving, life will be stingy to you. There is he that scattered and yet increased it. There is he that withhold it and tended to poverty. Do like this. Everybody do like this. Do you know what you are? Boxer. Every time you do like this, you withhold. Anytime you do like this, you release. So when you go back home today, check your giving life. Am I improving in my giving? Because if you are not improving in your giving, you cannot improve in your living. Because it is our giving that determines the quality of our living. What are the benefits that goes with covenant practice? Number one, it averts causes. Causes are averted. Causes are averted. When arrows are fired, they don't come near you. Causes are diverted away from you. That's why God said, I will rebuke the devourer for thy sake. He said, I will not allow the plague to come near thy dwelling. Let's read it from Malachi chapter 3, from verse 6. Malachi 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change it not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the day of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, say the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. Koro, koro. But you say, Wherein have we robbed you? He said, In tithe and offerings. Ye are cost with a cost. For ye have robbed me even this whole nation. So anytime you dodge, say with me, dodge. dodge. Paying your tithe or your offering, you attract a curse from God. Studio, put back scripture back. And when God curse you, I don't know which prophet can pray you out. Look at verse 9. Ye are cursed with a curse. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10 now. Bring ye all the tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Hear it. Say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to, to receive it. You don't even have storehouse. Your bank account is still savings account. Rooms enough to contain it. He said, prove me. Check from Genesis, Genesis to Revelation. The only place where you hear God say, prove me, is in Titan offering. Because he knows that you are working with calculator when you are in church. 
your head is very smart <laughs> people are calculating what they will give if I give this there is no permutation in giving are you hearing what I'm saying now if someone gives 10 naira angels can clap for him but when God knows you are bigger than that they will be praying oh Lord show him mercy forgive him from this cost that is about to come upon him praise God <laughs> So every time we give our tithe and offering, causes are averted. Number two, you enjoy sound health. Psalm 41. Psalm 41 from verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou will not deliver him unto the wheels of his enemies. Can you see what giving can do? Look at verse 3. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. And thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Which means he will be preserved from sickness. When people are plotting evil for you, God said, he will exempt you. Why? You consider the poor. You consider the poor. Do you know why God will consider you? If they take you away, who will remember the poor? So he makes sure that you are preserved. You are not trapped into sickness. Arrows cannot fly and catch you. The third benefit, there is a guaranteed divine protection. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the days of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from thy sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 3. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice. So there is protection. He preserves you. He shields you. He defends you. Job 22 verse 24. Job 22 verse 24 Thou shalt lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer are the stones of the brook To the next verse now Yea the almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver When God bless you he defends you He preserves you He blesses you he preserves the blessing that he has given to you. How do you connect to this blessing? What are the demands that guarantees this? You give willingly. Tell your neighbor, give willingly. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is uh, putting pressure on you. That's why God said, let him that give, give cheerfully. You are not under pressure. Give your size. Give your class. You are not doing competition. Give what you have. Prove to God that you love him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Give willingly. Not forcefully. You are not under pressure. It's a face. You may be giving 50 naira today. Before the end of this year, you may be giving 5,000. Somebody can't even say amen. amen. Do you know why it's difficult for you to say amen? You are not even thinking it. When will I get to the realm where I can be giving offering 5,000, 10,000? It goes with a vision. You must have a, what we call vision for prosperity. That's another message another day. You must have what we call vision for prosperity. So you give willingly. I remember the testimony of Paino Kadubeye. They went for a meeting in te uh, Texas, Houston. Now, can I take in call for an offering? So, he said, everybody should give. In fact, they should be provoked to give what they have never given before. That whatever they give, he's going to give double. So, everybody was, who is this person that is talking so proud and arrogant? It's okay, let's teach this man a lesson. 
Everybody started giving, 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 giving. Do you know what all of them gave? What everybody gave was not more than five hundred thousand dollars. He said, "Is this what all of you can give? Please do more, do more, do more." He was trying to provoke them, but yet he said, "I'm not going to follow you." So he said, "Whatever you are giving now, I'm giving double." So he gave one million. This is way back 1976. But look at his testimony. He said, Lord, if you bless me, if you bless me, I will give you 50%. Am I correct? Yes. So God gave him the first one, 50%. God tested him again, 50%. The third one, he entered the realm of billions. So after the meeting, Padegoye pursued him. Pursued him man. He said, come, come, come. Tell me your secret. He said, I have smelled poverty and I needed to be out desperately. And I told God, if he will bless me, this is what I want to do. God just gave him the first open door in business. He said, to, prove, to let God know that I mean what I'm saying, I gave him. I think it should be 90%. I'm correct. 90%. He gave God 90%. God did another one. He returned. He did another one. He returned. The man scale. You will scale. Yeah. He entered the realm of the point of no return. He said, now the blessing keeps coming. Tell your neighbor, it keeps coming. So Padego said, if you can do it, I'm going back to Nigeria, I will start doing it. And that is the secret of his ever-growing wealth, ever-increasing abundance. I hope you know their new auditorium now is three kilometers long, Another three kilometer, another three kilometer. I'm not saying 300 meters, kilometer. 1,000 one, 1, meter make one kilometer. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? So 1,000 meter times three is one wing. What, did, did you hear what I said? One wing, three kilometer. What they use in building the outer area is 75 million dollars. Not 75 million naira. Somebody say, ooh. <laughs> and lastly, give in faith. Any giving that is not in faith will not attract a reward. Give in faith. Lord, I trust you. That as this offering is going forth, something is coming back for me. Rise up to your feet. I know somebody is provoked with this testimony. One year from now, your testimony will be like this. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. You are going to pray from the depths of your heart. Whatever look like an unseen force fighting my financial destiny. Father, by this blood, he say, as often as you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, do it in remembrance of me. You are going to remind him the purpose for him going to the cross. Whatever is fighting your purpose and plan for my life. You say your plan is to prosper me and not to harm me. Any force fighting my financial destiny by this communion, let them be swallowed up. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Whatever is fighting my financial destiny, as I partake of this communion, let the plan of the wicked be disappointed. Let the manipulation of hell fail. Lift up your voice. Whatever is fighting my financial destiny, whatever is contending with my financial glory, as I partake of your flesh, as I drink of your blood, let the manipulation of the enemy, let the unseen force be disgraced. 
Let the manipulation of the enemy be swallowed up. In the name of Jesus. Lord, by this communion, break the spell. Destroy the yoke. Destroy the siege of wickedness. Destroy the siege of wickedness. Any power that wants to limit how far I can go by this communion, let their yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. As you partake of this communion, every arrow of misfortune targeted against you, they are disappointed in the name of Jesus. This month, your financial story must change. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. This month, your fortune level will change. In Jesus' name we pray. So shall it be. In Jesus' name.